Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 146 of Radio 815, the podcast dedicated to examining the works of writer, director, producer J.J. Abrams and his extended Bad Robot universe. I'm Matt Crandall here with my co host, Marcelo Inostroza, as we begin taking a look at the 2006 J.J. Abrams produced TV show, What About Brian, which was created by Dana Stevens, produced by Bad Robot. It aired on ABC as a mid-season replacement. It started on April 16th, 2006, with the first episode entitled Pilot, which was directed by the Russo brothers and Dan Lerner. So we've got the big Marvel, huge Infinity <laughs> Infinity War Endgame directors here just kicking it with Barry Watson in this low-key comedy about a bunch of people as they kind of hit their their 30s and are struggling with married life, single life. And as we find out right in the beginning, in classic bad robot fashion, we start in media res with a scene that we are then going to flash back to before this scene. So the very first scene is Barry Watson's Brian. Barry Watson, of course, of Seventh Heaven fame, coming fresh off that show into this. Him and his best friend, Adam, played by Matthew Davis, are having a fight because, as we find in this opening scene, they have made a pact, and Adam has broken the pact, and Brian is livid about this. Marcelo, what are you thinking as we hit the ground running with this scene of these two best friends fighting it out? I absolutely love that this show starts out in a typical bad robot trope, like you said, in Meteor Res, and we see Brian and Adam fighting over a deal that they made having to do with their best friend Marjorie. And I just really, really think I, I, I really, really love that this entire story of the first episode of the show is anchored around this party. And I love how everything circles back to the moments where Brian tells Adam, what about the pact? And I love that, like for the first, almost um, for the entire show, we fast, we, 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 we keep fl- we keep flashing back to different moments throughout Brian's day until we as an audience member are caught up to this moment. So I really, really love the structure of this opening episode. Yeah, it is classic bad robot stuff. And it gets us into some drama before we then sort of flash back to establish these group dynamics. And we see a scene of them all hanging out and getting ready to go see a movie. And we realize that Brian is the seventh wheel in this scenario because the main group consists of Adam and Marjorie. Adam, as I mentioned, played by Matthew Davis. Marjorie, played by one of my all-time favorites, Sarah Lancaster, who is a gorgeous dream girl the second you see her. And I loved her from shows like Everwood and would continue to love her on shows like Chuck going forward. And so they are a couple who are dating. We meet Brian's sister, Nicole, and her husband, Angelo, and they are the married couple without children. And then we meet the third couple, who is Dina and Dave, played by Amanda Detmer and Rick Gomez, and they are the married with children couple who have, you know, a bunch of kids running around and they're kind of, you know, exhausted all the time and maybe don't have the best relationship at the moment. But as they're getting ready to go out as a group, you know, they're like, okay, I'm going to drive with these people and these people are driving this way. Oh yeah. What about Brian? And so Brian being the single guy is kind of left out of the group when it comes to certain things and they try and include him. But anyone who has friends who have coupled up and gotten married And if you are like the single one, you do start to feel like the extra wheel sometimes or the couples want to do couple things or only the couple with kids can only do things with couples with kids. So this is a very relatable situation that we see Brian is kind of the odd man out. We find out that he's kind of like a bit of a sad sack when it comes to the ladies, like things haven't gone well. We shortly see after this exchange brian has a meet cute where he is not paying attention and he accidentally rear ends a woman in a car the woman is going to be known going forward as car girl and as soon as she steps out of the car i go (gasps) because it's amy joe johnson who is another dream girl that i've always had a crush on who many viewers will know as the pink power ranger but if you have been listening to our show 
and are a bad robot fan, you will immediately place her as Julie from Felicity. And you'll be like, okay, all right, back in the bad robot fray. And I love that they kind of put her against type because usually she is a, a very sweet character or if she is mentally disturbed in some sort of way or have like deep sadness, it usually doesn't come forth as anger. And in this, she is playing like this loud, angry, slightly crazy woman who, you know, very quickly her and Brian go from, you know, a meet cute with this minor fender bender to living together within a week, her taking over his entire house, like things escalate really quickly. What are you thinking as Brian rear ends car girl and out steps Amy Jo Johnson? I really love the introduction when, um, when Brian and the rest of the, the, the main cast are getting ready to go out to the movies, because like you said, uh, this scene really, really shows that everybody sort of acknowledges Brian, but everybody kind of puts him aside and leaves him. And, you know, they, they kind of treat him like, I mean, this is going to sound cruel, but I th I really thought they kind of treat him like the, you, you know, the six wheel or the, or the, or the kind pet that they have to, that they have to drag along. So I really like that when, when uh, his friends offer to take him into the cars of the movies, he, declines and when he declines he crashes into car girl or karen and it turns out to be amy joe johnson i really really like that because it's the first time that i've seen amy joe play this type of happy-go-lucky sort of out there girl sort of uh off the wall nutter girl and it was just really really fun to see her play that type of character because i've never seen her do that before i've seen her play you know, you know, Julie, the Pink Power Ranger. I've seen her play a cheerleader from the 50s. I've seen her play a police officer. So it was really cool to see her play a character that was so out of left field and so against type for her. I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's a great bit of casting. And immediately, you know, there's a bit of a familiarity there. If you are a fan of the people who made this show, because you probably have seen Felicity. And this is a return to Bad Robot doing this kind of show. Because, you know, obviously J.J. and Matt Reeves did Felicity, but then when Bad Robot really kicked off their ABC era, it was more action-oriented stuff like Alias, Lost, and then they do this, which is the return to kind of the roots. Um, even though J.J. is just an EP on this, you can still feel that this owes a debt to shows like Felicity. It's in that kind of vein, but it's rather than college, this is like, what happens 10 years later to these people? Do they still have the same relationships? And as you get on in life and things start getting more serious, how does that change your relationship with your friends? And so I thought that was pretty interesting. And I do like that very quickly after, you know, Brian throws himself into this car girl situation. And then he does have an interaction with Marjorie and we get a moment where Brian finally realizes the reason that maybe he has been unlucky in love is because, <laughs> surprise, surprise, he is absolutely in love with his best friend's girlfriend. So when he, there's a scene where he kind of like, it dawns on him like, uh-oh, I'm in love with Adam's girl Marjorie. And everything we have seen, you know, Brian and Marjorie are close friends because of Adam, but they actually have a really strong bond. And everything we see of Adam is kind of this dickhead who, you know, in the early goings, especially when after Brian has this realization, he, him and Adam are talking, and this is when the pact comes up. And Adam says, you know what? This car girl that you're with sounds kind of like a nut, and maybe you should cut her loose. And Brian's like, I don't, I don't know, man. And he's like, well, let's make a pact. You dump car girl. I'll dump Marjorie. We'll both be single guys out on the town, and like, we'll start fresh, because why should we be tied down? And so immediately we think, wow, Adam, you have the perfect woman. You're a complete dickhead. You're a complete idiot. Why are you thinking of this? And of course, Brian is thinking this is perfect because I will dump car girl. He will dump Marjorie. If I play this right in six months, I can be with Marjorie. And so that's what Brian's thinking so that he won't piss off his best friend by stealing his girl. And then what happens in the best TV way possible is the day after Brian has done the breakup and it did not go smooth because Car Girl is 
unstable <laughs> unstable and it it's not really uh something it's pouring gasoline onto a fire that was already raging and not good he gets kicked out of his own place so he can't even go home because she has just taken it over and he goes and he's expecting adam and marjorie to show up at this barbecue they're having you know and find out oh that they're they're broken up but what happens is marjorie shows up and she's got an engagement ring on her finger. What are you thinking as we see the devastated and confused look on Brian's face? And it's certainly, he's not overjoyed by this news. And Marjorie can sense that he's not overjoyed by this news. I really love the scene of Brian, Adam, and Marjorie at the pool table. Because uh, at a point, you mentioned it. There's a point when Marjorie says to Brian, Oh, you're a brilliant guy. Any woman in their right mind would want to have you. But that is such a good scene because like Matt said, the moment that Marjorie and Brian have that conversation at the pool table, you're like, holy shit, does Brian have feelings for his best friend's girlfriend? So you're like, holy shit. And they, just, a, just a quick word about uh, on Adam. That guy is a fucking... Dick and a half. I mean, he is so fucking annoying. I mean, there, there's this moment, a couple, uh, like a like a scene later, where Brian and Adam are sitting by a car. And that's where he comes up with a pack for the first time. He goes, oh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to break up with Marjorie. Uh, so then you can break up with car girl, but the way that he does it, he's like, Oh, I've been dating Marjorie for two years. She's got books all over her apartment. She puts her stuff everywhere. She, she, she has, obses she, she has obsessions with certain things that I don't get. And the things that Adam can't remember, uh, Brian can. So there, there there's, this, there's just these little things that Brian does that shows you Brian is the right person for Marjorie when Adam is not. Everything that uh, everything that happens with Car Girl and that whole situation about Brian uh, spilling sort of spilling the beans uh, to Marjorie about the pact that he made with Adam is really really good. But also, I keep thinking, I, I keep th I kept I kept thinking to myself, a lot of the situations that uh, the main cast get into in this pilot episode is because of a lack of communication, or because of or. or or a lack of, uh, of of misunderstanding, so I think that I, I think I think from a writing aspect, that's a really interesting angle to take it down and to go down. Yeah, I think you're right, and especially because there are a lot of people who, at this age, you know, you maybe aren't as open with communication as you would be, and especially when this aired in 2006, people weren't as focused on like their feelings and all that kind of stuff as we are now, where people are much more inclined to talk stuff out. Whereas then you would keep a lot more secrets. And I think, you know, we know that Brian and Adam have what they think <laughs> is a great friendship. And we see that Adam is kind of careless and he takes Marjorie for granted. And the worst thing is that after they get engaged and Brian has to fake that he's happy, Marjorie pulls him aside because they do have a close relationship. And she says, I could tell that you were kind of surprised by this. And she said, Adam told me about the pact. And Brian goes, what? And she said, yeah, like he, he told me it was your idea that you told him to dump me. And so Adam in chickening out and we find out that Adam did try and break up with Marjorie and they cried and then they probably made passionate love. And then they got engaged the next morning when they realized that it was a mistake. But we know in Adam's heart of hearts, he is not in this and he actually wants out and it is not a mistake. And even when he's claiming like he started to come around the next day, I don't buy it. I think he just realized he was in trouble and the only way out was to take this big leap. But he puts all the blame on Brian. So inadvertently, he makes Brian and Marjorie's relationship take a hit. And Marjorie's like, I thought we were better friends than that. And I can't believe you would try and hurt me by getting this guy to do this. And we know it's not because he wanted to hurt her. It's because Brian loves Marjorie and he thinks that Adam is a piece of shit secretly. And so it's so frustrating to watch that play out. But I really liked that they had the guts to go there very early because a lot of shows might dodge this and have like the reveal that Adam is the one who came up with the pact come out in like episode five and then have like some miscommunication go on. So I, th I thought it was really good that they tackled that up front 
and got that tough scene out of the way early. Yeah, in reference in reference to the way that the writers chose to go about uh uh their char- their characterization when it comes to Adam, I really think look, he is a fucking dick and he is the type of guy that I he's the type of guy that I don't think he knows what he wants and I think that he's at that stage in life his early 30s to mid 30s where he just wants to fuck around. He doesn't he doesn't know what it means to have a stable, good relationship with someone. And I don't think, I, 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 I think Marjorie is too good for him. Um, and uh, so, so I really like that, that in this episode, they didn't uh, have Brian and Adam have a giant fight and, and, you know, you know, and reveal to the audience as well as the characters that Brian, ha- that Brian has feelings for Marjorie and now Adam has to deal with it. I really like that they place that carrot in this pilot episode so we can see it grow and we can see it stretch to 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 the to the point of possibly breaking as we continuously go through the season here. And I can't wait to see where that leads. With that being said, I love how kind and considerate Brian is towards his dick friend Adam that he constantly tries to put Adam in the right. He tries to elevate Adam no matter what. He tries to protect him. And the reason that he tries to protect him is because they've been best friends since they were like six. So I love his good nature. And I love the way that he can't, he can't admit his true feelings because if he understands, if he admits his true feelings, he'll fuck up everything. Right. Well, and he only, he only realizes he can't admit his true feelings insofar as he doesn't want to hurt Adam because there is a part where he does try to basically lay it all out on the table and it's he he goes to find marjorie at work and they say oh she's gone to a conference in vegas and this dude pulls a felicity and goes to vegas follows his crush across the country he is about to tell marjorie she's like well what are you doing here brian like is everything okay and he's like yeah i need to tell you something and as he's about to lay it all out for her adam shows up because Adam is also in Vegas, which we didn't know. And so Brian does kind of, you know, lay some cards on the table, but he doesn't doesn't lay it all out. But we get more than I think we I thought we were going to get in this pilot with him telling Marjorie, you know, like, I'm not going to stop your wedding. But obviously, I think of you as a little bit more than just a friend. And that gets some wheels turning. But what do you think when he goes so far as to literally go from, you know, if they're in L.A., then he went the six hours or whatever it is to Vegas to try and tell her the truth about why all this is happening and his real feelings. But then Adam is there and he's really got to put himself in check to not hurt his friend. I, I really think that's crazy. I really think that is insane because for him to drive all the way from L.A. to uh, Vegas to sort of admit his feelings for Marjorie in this grand romantic gesture like we're in an Aaron Sorkin TV or movie, I think is ill-advised because I would have called Adam first to make sure that he wasn't there. But here's the thing, guys, when you're in love and when you're feeling the 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 the, the hit from Cupid's arrow, you're not thinking. So I really love that Brian sort of just did this impulsive thing and he was going to Vegas to admit his feelings to Marjorie, but right when he got there, like Matt said, Adam was there, so he really, really couldn't do it. So like I said before, as uh, Brian has been doing this whole episode, he put his feelings for Marjorie on the back burner to spare his rela- to spare uh, the feelings of his best friend and to possibly uh, uh, avoid a colossal uh, 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 friendship nuclear bomb between Marjorie, Adam, and himself. So I really, really enjoyed that. And I liked the, you know, tip of the cap to uh, Felicity. I don't know if the writer of the the writer of this episode and the creator of the show intended to do that, but it really felt like a it really felt like a Ben it really felt like a Felicity follows Ben to New York moment to me. Yeah, absolutely. Brian, his best friend being Adam and his other close friend being Marjorie, they they gave him in the, the cast, you know, Rosanna Arquette is playing his sister and they added that character, I feel, so that Brian would have somebody else that he could 
bounce some of his problems off of that he can be a little bit more open with. Um, and so that character in the pilot doesn't really gel just yet. Cause we kind of get a sense that like, you know, him and his sister have a relationship and he can talk to her more than he can his friends about being honest with stuff, but she has her own issues going on. And so we see her thing is her husband and her have been trying to have a baby and it's not going well. And in this pilot, the heavy, the heavy storyline is that she finds out, Nick finds out that she is pregnant, but then she finds out by the end of this episode that she has miscarried the baby and that, you know, this is going to put a bit of a strain on her relationship with Angelo. You know, we're getting a lot of hijinks from the love triangle and we get a lot of humor from Dave and Dina, but this this couple is kind of like the we're going to deal with some real grown up shit. You know, the difficulty with fertility and miscarriage and all that weight. How did you feel the dynamic of that couple and Brian having a sister that he can kind of bounce things off of worked for the show? As far as the pilot is concerned, I really, I really am sort of in lockstep with you. I think Brian's sister, Nicole, in this episode, as a support system and as someone that Brian can come to, to admit, to, 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 to try and quell what he's going through really didn't work. The fact that the writers gave uh, uh, Nicole this traumatic, really, really down to earth story about her having a miscarriage with, um, uh, with, uh, with her husband, Angelo, I thought it was really, really great. But I, but, but I, I truly, truly believe that the two couples that got the most to do in this pilot episode uh, were um, Adam and Marjorie and Dave and Dina. And I think just real quick, I said it before, a lot of the issues that our main cast are going through in this episode and in this pilot from a couple's standpoint can be solved if they just sit down and they listen to each other and they just be truthful with one another. Because the entire thing with Dave and Dina drove me up a fucking wall. If you guys would just communicate to each other and if Dave would just say to Dina that he isn't comfortable having an open marriage and he doesn't want to go down that road. He wants to, he wants to grab his wife, take her to the nearest table and make love to her. All the, all the miscommunication and all the misunderstanding would, would have been thrown away to the wayside. And it would be really cool if that happened in this episode, it would, it, it, it would be really cool in the weeks to come to see them try and rebuild their relationship after all this was out in the open. But the fact that this isn't out in the open, I think that the writer, uh, by doing that, I think that the creator of the show uh, put a put a story time bomb in the ground. And as the season goes along, this time bomb that she put in the ground is going to get higher and higher up until the surface until it goes off. And I just can't wait to see that. Look, I don't want to see it, but I think that's what's going to happen. And I'm totally, totally here for it. Right. And in terms of honesty, you know, Dina is the one who's blatantly honest insofar as almost hurting her husband's feelings where she's like, ever since I had a baby, we haven't been getting it on. And I think I want to see other people because you're not really doing it for me anymore. And she frames it like, wouldn't this be great? if you could go out and have your slice of pie on the side and I'll go out and have my slice of pie on the side. And we just won't talk about the pie when we're home. And Dave, who it should be noted, you know, Adam and Brian are childhood best friends, but Dave is kind of Brian's current best friend because he is his business partner at their video game company, zap monkey. And they work together. And so like he is a little bit, that's why they're in the fold because he's kind of, you know, not the childhood best friend that you still see, but like he is like the current like work husband of Brian. And so when he finds out that his wife thinks they should maybe have an open marriage to spruce things up with their relationship because things have flatlined since they had another kid and now they've got three kids at home and they can't find the time for each other. She frames it as like, isn't this a dream scenario I'm presenting to you? You can go out and score with all these chicks and you don't have to tell me. And so she cons her husband into agreeing to it. And then he kind of realizes like, wait a minute, 
I got a hot wife who's going to be able to score way better than I'm going to be able to score. This is probably not a balanced equation. This is going to be kind of not in my favor. It's going to actually drive a wedge between us. And I still am in love with this woman and find her attractive. I didn't think there was a problem, but he never speaks up to say it. And there is a moment where we know that she has a crush on her yoga instructor and she gets a babysitter to watch the kids while she goes out to basically have a date with the yoga instructor. And Dave calls home because he realizes he has to be truthful. And he leaves a message on the answering machine saying like, please don't do this. I don't want to do this. Let's work through our troubles without opening this thing up. And when he gets home and finds out she has already gone out on a date, he deletes the message because he realizes like that ship may have sailed and maybe if she's already taking action and we don't know how far the action that she took went, he realizes like, I guess I have to go along with this because I already agreed to it. And he doesn't stand up in that moment and tell her. And again, she framed it like he was going to be out there with these college women and having a great time. But This guy's kind of a, he's a video game designing dork. So we know that is not how it's going to play out. And she is this hot yoga mom. We're like, okay, like she's going to have a line around the block. And this guy's going to be just having trouble even talking to other women. So he kind of sees that's the future and he does chicken out. And it does seem to be this ticking time bomb that will blow up in someone's face. And we are left to wonder okay, is Dina going to be the first one to act on this and it's going to really hurt Dave? Or is, because it was Dina's idea, is Dave actually going to be the one to do it? And then Dina will realize it was a bad idea and she will be mad at him for actually doing what she said he could do. So it for him, it's a lose-lose. This, is, this for Dave is going to be crap no matter what, because I feel like the two where they're going to play it is she steps out and has too much fun and he gets jealous or he steps out, he regrets it, she's mad at him, and we will have to see that that is one of the seeds they have laid. Which way do you think it's going to go? I would really like it if if we see Dave being thrown into this new situation, if he actually came out of his shell a little bit and learn how learned how to talk to women because it's not said in these it's not said in this pilot, but I do believe that this couple has been married for 13 years. And, you know, you know, you know, you know, basically a person like Dave is a nerd. He has a, he has uh, the video game company with Brian, like mentioned uh, uh, earlier on in the pod. So I would really like it if Dave opened up in his, uh, opened up his shell and used this awful situation to learn how to talk to women. Look, I know that's going to sort of backfire in his face, but it, I think if if the story goes that way, it could it could lead to some very very comedic, funny, poignant moments between Dave and the women that he attempts to pick up. Yeah, but <laughs> definitely it opens the door for some awkward humor to be injected in there. And speaking of some humor injected, there is a moment where Brian needs to get his stuff and needs to get back into his apartment. And he has to pull a mission impossible to break into his own apartment because car girl has set up camp and is basically squatting in his place and won't let him out. And that whole sequence where he's breaking into his own house and hiding in his own closet from the girl that he broke up with is pretty hilarious. Uh, So I really like that, you know, (laughs) just Brian, like grow a pair. You got to do something, man. But uh, what do you think as, you know, Brian tries to break up with this woman and then he gets saddled with a dog he doesn't even like? Yeah, I really loved uh, I really love the fact that when Brian tries to break up with Karen or Car Girl, I really like that Amy Jo's character, Karen, really goes nuclear. And, you know, she takes uh, she she takes uh, she takes squatters rights in 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 uh, Brian's apartment, which causes him later on in the episode to break into his apartment with Marjorie. And I love the moment when when Brian is so nervous that he sends Marjorie to do recon first to make sure that Cargo isn't there and Marjorie breaks in first. But I love the fact that the only thing Brian takes from the apartment is his Mac translucent hard drive. And I love it when when uh, when Amy Jo or Cargo comes back and Brian and Marjorie have to go into the closet. And there's this great Felicity moment 
when Brian and Marjorie are looking at each other in the closet and just for a second, they start kissing and the music swells. And I was like, I was like, fuck, this is such a bad robot Felicity moment. I'm here for it. I love it. But this, this season is going to suck because either Brian and Marge are going to get together and the whole friendship, the whole core of this entire show is going to go boom or Brian is going to let Adam marry the love of his life and he's going to get dejected and, and so, so wherever, wherever the season is going to, uh, whichever road this season is going to go down, it's not going to be good for our principal character, for our principal character, Brian, or uh, uh, for Marjorie or Adam, when, when you think of it. So all roads from here are going to be bad. It's going to be funny, but I think it's going to be, it's going to be heartbreaking when we get to the end, I think. We will have to see how they play it because... Shortly, the last scene of this episode, and this episode, I think the reason that it was co-directed by the Russo brothers and Dan Lerner, Dan Lerner directed the second episode, and I think this final scene was actually like a reshoot once the show got picked up, because I know that the pilot, they actually originally shot it with someone else playing Marjorie, and they had to redo all of her scenes because they then cast Sarah Lancaster after they ditched the other actress, and uh, sorry... Sorry to Polly Shannon, but they they got the right one. Um, and then they have this scene that I you can tell everybody looks like six six months maybe have gone by, but it's supposed to be within the chronology. And it, it kind of looks a little bit different because it was shot last minute. And it is the gang having their like brunch that they have together. And they're starting to have the thing. And everybody's acting like they're happy couples. And Brian... And then Brian looks and he's like, why is there an extra chair here? And they're like, oh, and all of a sudden they're like, Brian, this is Lisa. We want you to meet Marjorie's friend, Lisa. And so they're trying to set him up. And so if we get this awkward moment at the very end where Brian, you know, he's like, oh, nice to meet you. You can tell he's like, son of a bitch. Like, I don't want my friends to do this, but we will have to see in the next episode where that goes and where they take it. So that is the end of the pilot of What About Brian? So if you guys like the show here, please let us know by liking, following, subscribing, share it, tell your friends, leave a comment. You can reach out to us uh, on X at JJUniverse815 or post using the hashtag Radio815. We are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash Radio815, where we've got the video form of the audio episodes posted up there. You can leave a comment on the YouTube page and share those very easily if you want to. If you want to get in touch with me, I am on Letterboxd at MDC3000. Marcelo, if the folks want to get in touch with you to let you know what they think of Dave and Dina's relationship, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, if you folks want to get in touch with me, I'm still on that sinking ship, burning ship uh, of X. I'm at Creek Fanatic 88. But I also have something similar to Letterbox. It's called TV Time. So if you just go to, if you just download the TV Time app and you search for uh, Creek Fanatic 88, uh, come there with me and we can chat about the movies and TV shows that we like. That's great. So that'll do it. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, Radio 815 over and out. Radio 815 is a Balloonhead Productions presentation in association with Killer Newt Productions.